Okay, in this q and I want to discuss uh, scene corruption problems within 3ds Max. Uh, we're currently version uh, 2010, so uh, in future versions it may have changed its file format. However, in this particular version, uh, this is a uh, it's not really a common problem. However, uh, it is one that flags up on occasion, so it's something to be aware of. Uh, upon saving your scene, um, your general kind of workflow, you basically work through, save your scene at the end, close Max, etc., close your machine, and then open it up. Uh, the next time you decide to work and then the scene won't load. Um, this is, can be attributed to a few problems. One, there's a problematic error within the actual scene itself and uh, upon saving the actual Max file um, it's, it's made it um, uh, corrupted. So the other uh, cause can be basically when Max crashes. It might be halfway through writing a file, either an autobat file or something like that, and then it crashes out or uh, the software performs an illegal operation and then exits. Um, this can uh, leave a file open, i.e. still being read by the drive, um, and that can obviously uh, create the corruption itself. Now the problem is with Max files is that they are a binary based file, file type, so therefore when you drag them into a note, notepad or a text editor you get something like this, which is just a, a mash of jargon and you know, rubbish really. You get a few kind of uh, text headers in there, but that's pretty much about it to be honest. Um, like I say, other pieces of software actually have um, an ASCII based file format, which is obviously you can actually copy and paste elements out of such a file type by dragging it into a text editor and just copying and pasting it into a new file, uh, in which case you can pretty much salvage the majority of your scene. However, in this particular instance, um, there's a few. Um, backwards ways we're going to have to use to try and get some of our stuff back. It's, this is more about um, good workflow more than anything to try and avoid it more than cure it to be perfectly honest. Um, okay so for example I've actually been working on this scene and it's been corrupted for example I all these uh, guys have gone for example. Um, what can we actually do to try and salvage it? Now what, one thing that we can do obviously is if I just reset this um, what we can do is try and um, merge in our last scene. So let's try and grab it. So the last incremental I've got in this one, for example, is 02. So let's try and open that. Now, normally you can tell when these things are corrupted or not because you tend not to get a thumbnail here. If you haven't got a thumbnail, then chances are there's been a corruption or you've done a save selected. Um, so this guy will open so I'm just going to pull in all my little teapots again and there we go everything seems to be fine. Um, one thing however to make sure of is that if you do decide to do this way and you try and bring it into a fresh scene i.e. reset scene make sure you're using the same unit setup. The reason being is because if you're using a different unit setup then um, your uh, edit poly could go a little bit haywire, your modifier setup could go a bit mental or uh, your light setup could be completely off the whack so um, bear that in mind when you do it to so try and assume or try and remember or note down exactly what kind of units you're actually working with okay um, other case in point let me just uh, merge in the other remaining element of this particular one which is this white connector which I bought in I thought it was the same size however this guy is all the way over here and he is absolutely massive so if I just zoom extents you see all my teapots all the way down here and my connector is all the way up here so again case in point different unit setup within this scene than this particular bunch of guys down here alright so bear this, bear this thing in mind so, uh, what can we do to try and avoid this kind of thing? So, one thing we can do is obviously make sure that your auto backup files are actually set up. So, we've got it enabled here. Uh, check by default to make sure you've actually got this enabled. It may not be uh, enabled by default when you actually install the program, if memory says it's not, so make sure it's turned on. Uh, and also set the number of auto backup files, well, increase it to a, a manageable value or a decent value. Now, this value here is one that I've amended. Um, you can boost that all the way up to about 99. Uh, however, it all depends on how much hard drive space there is and 
how much space you actually want to use on your drive. Uh, the initial value is set down to 3, however that means you'll obviously only have around about uh, 15 minutes worth of auto backups because obviously it's, you get 3 and it's saving every uh, every 5 minutes. So it's a good idea to increase this and normally I, I tend to put it up to about 10 or 20. Now the amount of intervals uh, minutes you might want to increase this uh, up to 10 maybe 20 maybe even half an hour depending on the actual size of your scene file that's being saved like for example if it takes maybe three minutes to save your scene file if you've got a lot of for example unique uh, collapsed geometry in there you can expect to see in size around about a couple of hundred 500 meg maybe even uh, maybe even a gig um, so bear that in mind when you're actually setting your autobot files now the problem is that Max, what Max tends to do is when it does do this um, scene corruption issue, i.e., it uh, f completely and utterly um, screws up the scene that you're currently working on, the actual scene file that you're working on. Uh, it can also mess up your auto back files. Now this can be attributed to, like I say, a, a problematic element within the actual scene itself. Uh, however, when you're actually saving the autobacks, it can be saving it to those as well. So um, it's maybe worthwhile uh, once per day is to change the actual name of the autoback file. So a previous day's autobacks are still present. So you all you might want to go into your project folder, your autoback folder, and uh, relocate these guys uh, to somewhere else. Like for example, you might want to shift the guys out of this. Uh, auto back folder out of here uh, into a different day. So you've got a, um, a daily backup and also uh, a, a minute based backup like for example uh, every, every five minutes or every ten minutes or whatever you decide to set until the end of the project so you actually make sure that everything's safe. Okay so that's one other thing. One other thing you could actually do is obviously have a, an incremental daily backup system something like Syncback for example is quite good and it's, there's also a free version which you can do a daily incremental on. So worst case scenario you do lose seam files then at least you've got a backup um, for the last day's work. So you haven't lost the entire project you've only lost uh, a small amount. Um, one other way to get around things, and it's a kind of, uh, again, backwards way of doing it, but if you actually notice these kind of problems are occurring, then there's either a problem with, you, with the software, might require an inst reinstallation, or it might be a problem with the drive itself. But just to edge on the side of caution, what you might want to do, and again, this is an extreme case, I've only done this like, one or two times in my life, is to actually render everything via Backburner. All the test renders that you do, uh, send them down to a farm. Uh, I've just got a selection of stuff that I've actually rendered out in the past, etc. Um, just shoved in here, for example, there's a list of render farm stuff down there. Um, you might want to say send stuff down here. Now, this will seriously clog up the amount of jobs within this um, uh, job list here. You'll get an absolute ton of them every time you do a network render test. Sorry, every time you do a render test, it'll send it down here. Now, the reason we're doing this is quite simply because the way Max actually saves and sends the scene down to Backburner. Now, if you are having, for example, a problematic scene, i.e. you've been encountering these crashes, if you send the scene file down to Backburner, what Max does is it archives the scene, it, it saves it, archives it up with all the assets, sends it down to the manager, uh, this guy down here, these guys, and um, it then renders it out via the server application. So, this guy there. So, what um, Max will then do is, if it renders via the server, even if it, even if the server is on your local machine, then the scene file is fine, okay? Because it has literally saved the scene, copied it, zipped it up with everything else, all the maps and etc. etc. Sent it down to the manager, and then the manager stored that particular copy of the file, extracted it locally onto um, either either your local farm or local machine or uh, standalone machine and then rendered it. Okay, it might take a little bit longer to um, save down to the machine than actually just clicking on quick render for example. However, you are safe in the knowledge that this file is therefore not corrupted. If for example your scene file, your main scene file does become corrupted, you can always extract a previous test from Backburner. For example, if I want to go for example 
um, this brain to heart tunnel 01 if that's the latest one I want to pull and the current one I'm working on has gone got corrupted what we can simply do is just go into uh, the back burner network folder and then we can simply see anything that we've actually got archived up we can actually use the archive feature within Backburner here if you want to archive a few jobs up for example gets them out of the main list and literally just relocates them into this archive location let's refresh that there we go so anything that we actually want to pull out from the past for example let's just go into jobs I'm just going to arrange it by date modified this brain to heart tunnel 01 has not only got the log, the XML file, it's also got the zip file. Now the zip file is simply a case of the location it was stored on, the drive, da 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 da, da and there, there we go, we've actually got the max file back. Okay, so it's quite simply a case of uh, sending the information down to Backburner to render out, because like I say, it quite simply just um, copies the scene file to Backburner so therefore you've got a in essence an incremental backup of render tests logged within your archive. Okay. Uh, anyway I hope this has been some help and um, one thing I have to say to be perfectly honest um, you'll get less errors if you make sure that you back up regularly. It's, it's maybe preaching to the uh, converted for example however it's always best to make sure that you do have an incremental backup each day. Um, a hard drive is very, very inexpensive, even a little external one. Uh, it's very inexpensive for you and it will save you so much pain if your hard drive, your main C drive or your D drive, your media drive or whatever, goes bang all of a sudden. Uh, at least you've not lost pretty much everything. <laughs> okay, so I hope you've had uh, some information out of this, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.